Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into the second and final Spring 2023 Season 1 Roundup from Gals Webby. So here we go, we're going to bring you our final update uh, for the Spring uh, in terms of long range models. Getting 15 long range models together to see what they're all showing from the world's leading forecast centres for, for the Spring of uh, 2023 and this is ahead of tomorrow's spring 2023 forecast so we will be releasing jazzwell's spring forecast for you tomorrow um and you know uh, the scenes models always play play their part within our long range forecast as well as the rest of our methodology so um i'll be on that for you in a second just say at first period say was 6 a.m up local weekend forecast coming for you coming up to you shortly and a 10 to 14 day as well. So please like, share, subscribe on the video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. I hope you're having a lovely Saturday. Right, let's start off then with the uh, with can sits and trouble your tip. It's going to wish you these as quickly as possible. So this is a mean cell pressure anomaly uh, for uh, uh, for um, spring 2023 from can sits. Looking rather anti cyclonic, high pressure sitting over and to the east of the country, low pressure out. In the North Atlantic, so a lot of high pressure in control. Temperature anomalies for the spring 2023 from Kansas are coming out above average, and precipitation anomalies for spring 2023 are drier than normal. So a dry, mild, very pleasant spring uh, for the third world to start us off. Right, let's go through the NMME suite of models, starting off with NASA. This is a temperature anomaly from uh, NASA. Their seed model going for a warmer than average spring. Uh, in the orange chain there, so it's around one degree or more above average. Uh, Precipitation-wise, not much of a seal, just a little bit drier than average to our north. GM, GEM, uh, the Canadian model, looks like that. Close to average with the temperature anomaly. Actually, the continent looking rather chilly with the temperature uh, anomaly there for uh, the spring of 2023. Uh, precipitation wise, again, very weak signal, perhaps a bit well on the wet side out to our west side, on the dry side to our north. You notice Scandinavia looks a little bit dry, as does France, so it could be a bit of high pressure around northern and western Europe this spring. But that's a cooler anomaly with the GM. And then NCAR looks like that, again, similar to NASA, again, for above average temperatures, most parts of Europe looking very mild as well. Uh, with uh, NCAR and uh, precipitation wise more of an Atlantic driven season so wetter than average to the north of the UK and drier than average to the south and to the southwest. IRI uh, temperature probability forecast for spring 2023 looks like that of course IRI is uh, International Research Institute for Climate and Society from Columbia Climate School, uh, and we can see that uh, a, a, the probabilities are favouring a, a warm spring with above average temperatures there quite strongly favoured by around 50 to 60 percent, so favouring uh, a warm spring. And uh, probability for precipitation, not much of a seam, looks a little bit drier to the north, uh, and probability is favouring it to be slightly wetter to the south, but much weaker probability uh, for precipitation compared to temperature. Uh, Patal Peng's analogues look like this. Remember, Patal Peng doing things a little bit different. He's looking at sea surface temperature anomalies across the world in any given month, in this case, uh, last month in January, and then creating an analogues based forecast going forward. So, uh, Patal going for a very anti cyclonic spring with his 200 millibar height anomaly showing high pressure over and to the east of the country, so lots of dry weather this spring. Uh, there above average temperatures with Patel Peng's analogues as well, only by around half a degree or so, but nevertheless a rather mild and average spring anticipated, and of course with high pressure in control, a dry spring expected as well, not just for us, but for most parts of Western Europe actually coming away with a drier than normal spring. And then CFS V2 700 millibar height, height anomaly looks like this for spring 2023. Um, this one's a little bit different, has a high pressure further north, it could be getting its influence by the uh, recent sudden stratospheric warming, so placing uh, a blocking area of high pressure close to green, which would be a colder scene, especially earlier on in the spring, with winds tend to be in more from a northeasterly direction, not, not sure how seriously we can take that as a seasonal anomaly, it might be there thereabouts for March, or the start of the spring, but not sure that the SSW will have 
you know, influence across the whole season. So the temperature anomaly with CFS is only about average or has no signal. A bit different to what we normally get with this bar of CFS V2, where most of uh, Europe is bathed in warm orange and red colours. So closer to average uh, or no signal temperature only for this spring and uh, a dry of an average spring anticipated for the UK, Ireland and uh, down into France and the low countries as well. Right, that's it for the uh, North American models. But what about uh, the European models? So this is the mean cell pressure anomaly. From the ECM WF, actually in some ways similar to the CFS, with high pressure blocking around Greenland. There's an area of low pressure to our south as well, but CFS doesn't really have that as much. So you'll think that's going to be bringing in the wind from an east or northeast direction. And again, pretty early on in the season, that could be quite a cold signal. So the temperature anomaly of the ECM seas model is a little bit above average. Average to a little bit above, you know, in those jelly curves, no more than half a degree above north, so about average temperature uh, temperature anomalies. Um, precipitation wise, not much of a signal, but the mean cell pressure anomaly certainly suggests like blocking this spring and uh, earlier on in the season, that would be a colder scenario. Uh, Copernicus suite of models, um, starting off with Metro France, so very weak signals there with uh, Metro France, let's just put in uh, a couple of question marks, it's not clear quite what mean cell pressure anomaly is doing uh, there, but it's going for a warmer than average spring uh, in most orange colours, which is around half a degree to one degree above normal, and uh, again, not much of a signal for uh, precipitation, so other than to be warmer than average this, this spring, uh, not much of a signal from um, from uh, Metro France. Now, DWD, look at this, also going for blocking within the normal attitude, so high pressure around Greenland, low pressure underneath it into the west of Europe as well. Uh, so the temperature, not only the DWD, again, it's coming out about average in most yellow colours, uh, and precipitation anomaly is wetter, but normal again, this could be a cold thing. If that blocking is in place in March, that could be quite a cold thing. Not necessarily in April, and particularly not necessarily so in May, but earlier on in the season, closer to the end of winter, um, that could be quite a cold scenario uh, from uh, DWD. E triple C showing high pressure up towards Scandinavia this spring, low pressure out in the Atlantic. Of course, spring tends to be the most easterly of the season, tend to have the most Scandinavian highs and whatnot. So expect quite a lot of easterly winds with that through this spring. They can be cold early on and then later on they'll get warmer, of course. The temperature anomaly about to a little bit above average in most orange in those to just about orange colours. And precipitation looks drier than normal to our east and south, wetter than normal out to our west. Uh, CM double C, this would be a uh, Mediterranean model, that one just showing low pressure within high latitudes, really, so uh, it's a blocking, we've got low pressure around Greenland and ice. A lot of variation with these models uh, this month, which isn't going to help with the spring forecast, and the uh, temperature anomaly is uh, rather above average by around half a degree to a one degree. Uh, Precipitation-wise, not much of a signal, but does look a little bit on the drier side, as more so, especially in the south. And then the JMA uh, looks like that uh, for spring 2023, with high pressure up towards Greenland, some low pressure in the Atlantic, and also close to Spain. Uh, the model is going for a milder or warmer than average spring by around half a degree to a one degree above normal. And again, not much of a signal for precipitation. Let's carry that carry on that Asian theme with the Beijing Climate Center from China. So this is a 500 millibar height anomaly from the Beijing Climate Center for spring 2023. Overall, going for quite anti-cyclonic spring with high pressure in the Atlantic and going to our north. You think that's going to be bringing in winds from more of an easterly type direction. If anything, the temperature anomaly is close to average, doesn't look particularly warm uh, for this spring. So near normal temperatures, 
And uh, some trade winds does look rather dry, which I expect, of course, with high pressure blocking off the Atlantic. So that's quite a chilly sort of start to the spring, maybe there. And, uh, you know, then, then getting warmer, but um, rather on the dry side uh, for this spring, the dry spell continuing there for Asian Climate Centre for spring 2023. And then finally, we've got the UK Met, uh, which looks like that. Mean seal pressure anomaly for spring 2023 from the UK Met has high pressure ridging into uh, the west of Europe from off the Atlantic, going for above average temperatures this spring um, with those orange colours there on the temperature scale. That's around one to one and a half degrees above average, I think. And precipitation-wise, looks rather dry. The wet weather being moved away to the north and looking just rather dry for this spring. So the dry spell goes on. There's a lot of the differences there between those models. A lot of variations. Some of them going for blocking within the high latitudes. Some of them going for low pressure within the high latitudes. You know, very, very variable. Um, which doesn't make it particularly easy, I have to say, for the spring forecast that we're going to be releasing tomorrow. So I don't think these have been much help, really, uh, actually, for the, spring, <laughs> for the spring forecast. But anyway, that's what they're showing. And uh, that's it, then. So uh, that's the final spring 2023 season. We'll round up done and dusted for you. And as I say, Gaz Webby's spring 2023 forecast will be released uh, tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, then please can you like, share and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We will be back uh, shortly with weekend forecasts. And there'll be a 10 to 14 day coming up for you later on today as well for the second and final spring 2023 season roundup. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.